pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time I'd just like to open the floor for nominations for a chairperson of the Curriculum and Technology Committee. Okay, is there a motion? Okay. Any other nominations? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. I abstain. Okay. Just don't have to wait. Okay. So now it's her turn. Okay. Now is the time for a public comment. Okay, I'd just like to mention tonight we have a wonderful uh, proposal that is prepared tonight by Paul Lucky, the assistant principal at Seymour High School. Also here with us tonight is our head principal, Jim Freud. Uh, these proposals are something that we've been working on since early fall, and it's also a part of our goal setting, both in Mr. Lucky's plan, <coughs> evaluation plan, and um, goal setting plan as well as uh, initiatives of the superintendent as well. Uh, we're just very proud tonight in regards because these are definitely programs that are going to benefit and expand our support for our students at Seymour High School. So I think uh, this evening you'll be very proud in regards with the manufacturing uh, proposal and also with the Griffin Hospital collaboration partnership with the Allied Health Program there. And we're very proud of that opportunity as well. And we also want you to uh, look and give consideration as well for the first responders pathway um, for the fire and for the police uh, program as well. So he'll talk about each of these proposals and that's all we have to discuss tonight. There will have to be a um, amendment to our current graduation requirements in regards because we've got to provide mastery of, with the standards, not just uh, not just the situation where it's seat airs, but where there is mastery based credit with these type of programs and capstone projects and internships. So at this time, we'll turn it over to Mr. Lucky, if that's OK. <laughs> The manufacturing, there's actually three proposals uh, that he's going to present tonight. They're all very good. Uh, some are different financially, but we think we know the best one to recommend, and uh, we'll leave it up to the committee. First of all, thank you all for doing this so quickly. I deeply appreciate it. And I'd like to definitely thank Dr. Coppin and Mr. Freud for allowing me to do this. Um, it's been a long time coming since I've had some autonomy in order to push programs to benefit all kids um, in our school. So, with that being said, we'll start with the manufacturing. Um, if you notice above the manufacturing, I just listed for your consideration how many hours are put into a full-time course. And that was, that's going to roll back into when we talk about mastery learning. So that's why that's at the top, so you can kind of understand where I possibly came up with credit rewardment based on the hours that we teach in our building. 
There's three different proposals for your consideration, and it is your, your choice um, in the manufacturing. The first proposal, um, as you see, is the number one, and the total cost of this proposal is approximately $20,000. And with this proposal, what we would be looking to do is have articulations with Housatonic Community College as well as Northern Valley Community College. The articulation would result in a brand new course in manufacturing. Um, and in this course, half the time would be split between what we call TIG welding, um, which would be an agreement with Northern Valley for students that want to go into their welding program. It would be one of several courses, but we would be doing all the instruction. It would be at no cost to the students. The second half of that course would be bench work. And the bench work is aligned with Housatonic Community College. And that's aligned with their CNC manufacturing um, program. So it's one of about a dozen courses that a student would have to take in order to become, uh, have the knowledge base to take the assessments to become a CNC manufacturer. So again, this would be a half, a full year course composing of these two things that we would like to call Introduction to Manufacturing, Engineering, and Fabrication. If you were to click on the links, um, you'll go and see what the Nugget Valley TIG welding curriculum is about, as well as the Visitonic Benchwork curriculum. Um, when you click on the Benchwork, I believe it does give you an adjacent school system who already has that articulation with them. Um, they're actually implementing it for the first time this coming semester. So that would be one choice um, and including in that one choice, we're also going to articulate um, Housatonic Community College's blueprint reading course. So that's part of the program to become a CNC operator and manufacturer. We need to take blueprint reading. This would be incorporated into our current CAD 1 course. So there's no new courses. Um, he already, Mr. Pucci already goes over some of the blueprint reading in there. We would just expand upon that to make sure we're meeting all the needs of Housatonic Community College. The second course we already have, and that's our CAD 2 course. Um, that's dealing primarily with what they call SOLIDWORKS, which is an industry standard in engineering. And we already teach this course. There's going to be very little that needs to change. Mr. Joe Prucci is a master teacher, and um, everything he's teaching in there is pretty much going to be, or is already in this curriculum. So again, there will be no change there. The last piece um, is called NAP for Manufacturing. Again, there would be no additional course for this, but students could test and take the test for that particular course. It's something that Visitonic Community College offers. But our students who are in Osborne 1, or 1A one and then 1B, would be able to take the Visitonic Community College final exam for math and manufacturing. Or if we have kids coming in in geometry already, they'd be able to just take the assessment and try to arrange it at the end of eighth grade, so it's fresh in their minds, and then receive that credit at Visitonic. So the Housatonic credits of all in option one, no cost to students whatsoever. What the $20,000 would be utilized for is to buy, we have currently two TIG welders. We would like to get five uh, TIG welders. So there would be three more TIG welders along with the materials and supplies that we need for the welding. It would also include all of the new equipment we need for bench work and the materials and supplies for bench work as well as the textbooks that are being utilized by Northern Valley and, community, and Houston Community College. So the totality of that package, financially, without not talking about a teacher yet, is $20,000 to do all those articulations and have the proper equipment and um, training uh, for our teachers and for time for them in the summer to either tweak the curriculum or create the curriculum for the brand new course. And there shouldn't be much creating, it's just that is, is the, is the, it's 45 hours technically for the welding, and the bench work might be a little bit longer, so we're just going to have to do a scoping sequence. It shouldn't take them more than an hour, hour and a half to meld the two together in the summer to do that. And then I, I suspect that the blueprint reading would be nothing more than an hour, hour and a half just to integrate that into the CAD 1 course. Option 1, um, what we typically have done over the past four to five years is we've turned away what I call three the three and a half teaching credits of kids who want to take technology education courses. So our typical teachers teach five courses, so we're turning away three to three and a half. I anticipate with this new articulation and programs that this is going to increase enrollment in the tech ed area. So 
So I would be requesting an additional tech ed teacher um, in, in, in order to A, not turn away kids, B, to incorporate this, and C, we do have sometimes a little bit of an overload in some of our shops, um, and we want to get that to an appropriate number in the shops. Um, so all those things would encompass, I believe, the need for a new teacher. So that's option number one. I don't know if anybody has any questions on option number one, and I'll give you the next two, and you can go on. Uh, why have we not, in the past, asked for an additional tech teacher, whether part-time or full-time? I don't recall in any of the budgets that there was uh, you may have asked for in the past that we get cut from our proposal before it went to the board. There's been several, there's been more than several, there's been dozens of things that never came to you. So the total cost is $25 plus the, the teacher. Correct. Plus the teacher. So who's a Tonic has um, provided us. Um, they actually came to our school twice. And then one time we had them in the shops. Actually twice we had them in the shops. The second time they came with the instructor himself. He looked through our, all of our current material and said, hey, you need this, these particular things. So they created a purchase list for us. Um, and then Myself and the teacher who would be teaching the welding, Mr. Stock, we went to Noggin Valley and visited their workshop up there. We showed them everything we had and they suggested that we get another three TIG welders. In addition, we'd be creating um, workstations, they're kind of separators, and we would be able to self-build those. And the biggest piece to that is the ventilation. So currently we do have a huge fan in taking it out, but the better setup when there's gonna be this much welding going on would be run ductwork from that fan into each one, just, it just hangs over each of the stations. And it's not complicated ductwork like you would see in a restaurant or anything. Um, I have pictures of what they have at Nautica Valley. And they literally just have a huge fan and ductwork running and a drop on top of each station. Um, so we, the teacher and I, Mr. Stock, talked about it because there is limited space in the garage that we use outside for the welding things or for our advanced engineering course. And we definitely think we can build these workstations that will kind of fold up against the wall and across each other so that when the kids are in advanced engineering building the cars that we build and race, that it won't take up the space for them. But it's a really good integration. Um, this would be the introductory course, and the current course we have right now would be the advanced manufacturing and fabrication when we're actually building the cars right now. So the students here, it would actually help the other course because we would come out with some master welders. We picked the TIG welding because there's multiple types of welding. We picked the TIG because that's what we utilize when we build the cars. And TIG is actually one of the most difficult types of welding to do um, with aluminum. So this will get them at a very high end um, welding. And then if they want to go on to Dr. Valley, they can go on to Dr. Valley and go for that certification. Currently we have two students that have done that on their own um, that have been in advanced engineering courses and are fully employed. Um, one's I think 23 and the other is late. They're both, both fully employed, full insurance, driving around in the vehicles. <laughs> so it's pretty good for them. I do. About the textbooks, so are those going to be something that they can use, we will have to use each year? Yes, they'll be classroom sets. Okay. So we'll keep them in the classroom. You know, the, the amount of time they'll be in that textbook is, from both programs of college, going to be less than 10% of the time. Mm -hmm. The rest is all hands on, hands on, hands on. Just basically a framework in regards mm -hmm. just to provide the background. Okay. I, I think too what's really important um, in regards to this is we've really put an emphasis on this um, as we've started with the school year in regards about that career pathways is so important and to meet the, meet the needs now of where we are and also with the manufacturing need if you may remember uh, I know our two board members here remember the presentation that I had asked Mr. Lucky to present back in the early fall and just setting the groundwork that the emphasis is really on manufacturing and where the jobs are in Connecticut, the great success stories. And we also had the opportunity to attend um, that outstanding workshop that they had up at the Industrial Parkway. You might just mention that as well. And some of these professors were, were there. 
Yeah, the visit ball, the visit time at the end, and Arthur Valley Community College professors were there. The basement systems, there was roughly 50 CEOs of manufacturers, um, and it was the, they regionalized themselves, so they're trying to gather the, together people to share interests, to share, you know, it's, it's difficult for them to get supplies, so they were talking about that, and they started talking about the workforce, and we were there in one adjacent town, we were the only two high schools there, and then it was a town of Canada, uh, Valley and Goodwin College were the only colleges there. So it was good. We were able to adopt a company network with numerous people there. Um, just today, we were up at Basin Systems for almost an hour yeah. speaking with their recruitment specialist and their general manager uh, about possible opportunities for graduates in the future. So just where, where the jobs are, where they're recruiting for students right. in, the, in the employment area later. Has there been any formal or informal assessment of student interest in this program? So the, the student interest goes from what I've been going in the classrooms and just talking to the kids that are in these types of classes. Mm -hmm. So one of the ancillary things um, that happened was through all the networking that I've been doing Dr. Compton, um, I've been able to meet some people from the workplace yeah. and they hooked me up with something called the Justice Center. Uh, which is named after one of our former justices in our state court system, I guess, he created it in his passing. It's kind of his legacy mm -hmm. thing to help kids get jobs. And um, what we have right now is we have 12 kids who are seniors. Um, I surveyed the staff. I said, hey, I have this opportunity for kids to possibly go to Emmett after school and start doing the manufacturing thing. Would you give me names? So they gave me like 15 names and I had the 12 seniors come. And um, we had a meeting in the building and then last night a parent meeting and a Zoom call. And I had seven kids today running through the hall. I went in, I went in, I went in. We only have six slots because we had so many other groups. So is it going to be for everyone? No, for sure. But there's a niche of kids that going you know, into the month of December is when the seniors, when they don't know what they're doing, they really panic. And I think that if we can start educating them younger and younger about these pathways, uh, more especially starting in eighth grade, yes. about where they can go and what they can do with us, um, I believe, I wholeheartedly believe the program is just going to skyrocket because we all know what the, the debt is, the debt of not everybody. The mantra in education for many years, which was incorrect, I tried to fight it, was everybody goes to college. But that's not true. You know, and there's things that we can't ship off to other countries, and we need people who are tradesmen, who are hands on. Perfections is what I call them. Yeah. You know? And the beauty of these programs is that it's all math. They just don't know. It. Yes. <laughs> it's all math. It's hands on math. Like they're mechanical, very, very mechanically intelligent students. And you put an equation, might not mean anything, but you put that equation, some kind of hands on thing, and the kid does it. You know? So we want to find a niche and make them proud of themselves and push them in that niche. You know, you, yes, you want to work on your weaknesses. But I think. My personal opinion after 22 years of doing this, 23, however long it's been, you gotta find what the kids' niche is, what their strength is, and push that strength because that's gonna improve their confidence and their weaknesses. And we haven't done a great service to students in these areas. So, no, have I formally done a survey? No, but I know I have kids running to me in the hall, like, because they knew I only had six slots. So, so I'm thinking back um, last spring, about the creative thinking that you did for kids who were at risk during the of failure during the remote learning. Right. Do you think that programming will help capture some of those students and, and keep them engaged in school? Yeah, it's, this is their niche, mm -hmm. right? So the students that we have that are athletes, they do better during the sports season. Mm -hmm. The students when we have clubs, um, and the club is, is picks up momentum. So if we're, like right now, when, we, when Jim and I left the school, the musicians were all practicing. Those kids start to pick up their grades because it's their niche. You know, when we start building the excitement, they're actually doing things hands on. Hands on, yes. You know, we were the last comprehensive high school to have a tool and die program in the state of Connecticut. And Jim and I came to work one summer in 2008 or 9, and things were just being removed yeah. um, without us knowing. You know, but th but that housed a certain set of kids that had their niche and had very little discipline in the building, their grades all went up, you know, and we've been trying to do it in other different ways, but the time is here and now for manufacturing in so many different factors. You know, you can see it in all the different data pieces. 
I do believe it's going to help um, you know, a myriad of different ways, from their academics to their emotionality to their you know, just wherewithal to their soft skills, which is a huge thing. Um, so it will be practiced in there. What shall we bring here with these tech learners find for themselves? So if they're going to become right out of high school, just with the training they've had with us, and become employed, I think they could expect an eighteen to twenty-one dollar range, mm -hmm. because they're going to have all this behind them. They'll have on hopefully on the transcripts from well, they'll have on the transcripts from Northern Valley or from Hanukkah, but hopefully on the senior high school transcript that we did these types of things and they're all articulated. So that should prove what their knowledge base is to a the manufacturer. Um, the kids that I have that are going to be going hopefully soon after school to Emmett that are in this program, the seven kids that ran after me, it's the same price range. They're just condensing this type of program, you know, to nine hours a week in a shorter period of time. Um, <coughs> we're going to be doing most of what they do there. And that's what the workplace has told me, which is the funder for that. The workplace is the workplace, of course, the investment board that actually places people into these insured jobs. And, and the beauty of, of these things, again, is if they get hooked, right, they, they can go to Naugatuck Valley and basically take, I think it's another six courses beyond what we have, and then get to be a CNC manufacturer. And now you're talking more in the $45,000, $40,000 starting range um, for a good initial apprentice in there. Um, and it moves up quick. So this is only option one. I'm going to go through the other two. Um, so option two in manufacturing would include everything that's in option one, plus uh, some additional things. So option two, um, there is a satellite manufacturing facility at Derby High School. Currently it's being used in the first couple periods of the day, and who's the kind of community college professors are teaching the CNC programming there those two periods of the day. <clears throat> so there would have to be an agreement for this to happen between the Derby superintendent and our superintendent who have been in contact with each other. Yeah, let, let me just address that. He is willing uh, to have that type of partnership. Of course, it's between that the opportunity could exist for that program, but it's a situation also then when it would go back to, to the Board of Ed as you to approve it. Um, their only problem is with that particular proposal, there's a downside. There is and a downside. He'll talk, he'll talk sure. about that. Yeah. But that is an option, and I think it's wonderful that Derby would offer that partnership. It's just, so it's just the, at this the, time, it's not most suitable, maybe. Maybe not, right. So, so at this point, if we were to get in agreement with Derby High School, this is not a community college, we would have students getting bus from our school at approximately. 12 o'clock, and they would go to Derby until 2.30, when it would be who's a town of community college professor teaching them in the, the CNC manufacturing. They would learn all the basics of manufacturing before they get to CNC, but that would be the progression for them. They would actually start in junior year. Um, so I had a chart on here. The junior year, they would be taking these particular courses. Um, they'd be taking principles of quality and metrology. Um, junior year at Derby with the Houston instructors, they would only be doing it if they did this junior year for the second half of the year. And the reason being is because we would have articulated all the initial courses in option one. So rather than paying Houston Tonic a teacher, we have our own teachers teaching all of those courses from the Luper meeting to the bench work and so on. Then senior year, they would be taking the following courses, Introduction to Machine Technology, CNC One Lab, Machine Lab at Derby. They would be doing that all year long from 12 to 2.30. So they get on the bus roughly 12, go to 2.30 and come back. So there's a couple problems with this. Um, one, we have the bus then, right? And number two, I just recently received with the contract would be with who's a talent. So in the contract, which is actually one of the links above, you can look at it in your own leisure. In this contract, um, they outline that they want a minimum of 15 students. 
And quite frankly, that's per 15 juniors, 15 seniors run the program. And I don't know if we'd be able to consistently give them 15 for both of those programs. And if we didn't, we would be held liable for paying for 15 regardless. So that is my biggest concern, is that we can't fulfill that number, and now we're being held liable, both in talks with the Derby superintendent, or yes. Dr. Compton, yes. as well as the who's kind of professors. There is money, there has been money in the past to offset that via grants, but there's no guarantees. So it's approximately $2,100 for the seniors, because they're going, each senior, because they're going all year, approximately $1,100 for the juniors, because covering those other courses in option one. I know they're going half a year, but when you do the math, and just in the seniors, we're you know, over $30,000 a year committed to if the grant funding doesn't come up. And that, that's a lot of money. So that's option two. Anybody have any questions about option two before I go to option three? <laughs> I think we'd have to really build the program before we could go with those numbers. He did say that the possibility of a grant could be available, or he thought it existed, to transport these kids uh, to pay for the busing. But the problem is, it's just a situation with the number that would have to be. We can't really substantiate, I don't think, 15 and 15. Perhaps not right now. Not right now. So option three would go back to the original proposal, and, and I know you weren't here for the original proposal, but there is a link there to it, to the, and it was uh, on YouTube, I believe, um, to the original proposal, and that would include us having our whole native action facility at Seymour High School. Um, it would be approximately a quarter of a million dollars. Mr. David Tuttle, who is the tech ed teacher, um, department chair over at Platt, um, is also a Seymour resident, a Seymour grad, helped me put together that proposal. So that, you're right, that would be proposal three. Um, proposal two and three would include those articulations that we have um, in proposal one. Any one of these proposals will require an additional teacher. Um, and those are the three manufacturing proposals um, that I would like you to consider. And again, it's to your pleasure and Whatever questions you may have, I'll try to answer the rest of the best of my opinion. Is there an option that's preferred? I think the situation with number three, we realize it was such a beautiful program, but there's not grants out there right now to bring in all that equipment. Um, just don't think that's practical. It's not financially feasible at this there point, unless there's some kind of grant that comes that eventually that we could be able to have all of that equipment. Mr. Tuttle's vision is absolutely phenomenal. We just, at this time, we're trying to just start one that could possibly work. Um, Proposal number two is dealing, like we said, with 15 kids a junior year, 15 year, uh, kids a senior year. Um, not sure about the numbers yet. I don't think we're quite there. Um, I agree. Mr. Lucky, you're the expert in this area. What's your recommendation to the board? To me, my I mean, recommendation is proposal number one, so that we can get this off the ground and continue to build momentum. Continue, you know, Dr. Thompson is very gracious about allowing me to go different places to go start to network. And I think the more that I network, and the more we start building these programs and bringing manufacturers to us to break, make recommendations, <laughs> we'll get to that relationships. And I truly believe that we'll be able to internally build just through those relationships with donations in the future to get to really ultimately where we want to go is have our own manufacturer. Um, but I think it's going to take time. It's not going to be built over. Mr. Freud, you want to comment as a high school principal? Well, and it's exciting, you know, looking at all the work that, that, that Mr. Lucky and Dr. Compton have been putting into this. Uh, it was very unfortunate when we lost the tool and die program. That was a surprise. It was a decision that was made uh, because that uh, program was allegedly antiquated. From the 
find out a few years later, um, the state is in dire need of tool and die makers, and uh, it's nice to be able to build back a uh, program that services a certain population of students. Uh, and you know, it's it's exciting. To, and the work that he's put in, I always defer any questions to the students, Mr. Rocky, because he has put a lot of effort into it. It's pretty incredible, to be honest with you, as far as the vision for this program. Done a great job, the networking with the professors, the articulation agreements, just looking at all of this. It's been a lot of time, and it's really, like I said, the, the relationship building and the networking and the support is now there. And that's because of Mr. Levy. So I've been privileged to be at two, two meetings now, and uh, I realize where the need is, and it's important to have this opportunity for our kids. So does that cover everything that was in the information section of the agenda? And we can move on to discussion and possible action? Correct. For being back. For being back. So the first three course proposals are those the three options? Number one on the sheet of paper you have, number two underneath, would the second one be number two, may affect the American pathway option one, see above plus two, that's number two. So I'm looking at course proposals on the agenda? Yes. And it's actually number one, mm -hmm. I think, is what he's wanting to recommend. That's the I'd have to review that again. <laughs> okay. Full year course. This is my little agenda for this. Correct. Yes, it's number one. Yep. Number one. in the workplace. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, move on. Is okay? Yes. Vote on motion. Yes. Oh, that's right. So all in favor? Aye. with the Griffin Hospital Collaborative Partnership is basically this program is really already put together. Uh, Mr. Lucky again and I've spent some time, especially Mr. Lucky, we attended several sessions. Um, at, uh, we attended one specific orientation meeting at Griffin Hospital and they're going to be coming December 20th to do an overview Monday. at 7 o'clock this coming Monday. So uh, I'll let you go ahead and talk about this initiative. We also want to thank former uh, board member Fred Stanek. You might want to allude to that. Yes, Mr. Fred Stanek was the one that brought this uh, to my attention, Dr. Compton's attention, and 
And again, I thank Dr. Compton and Mr. Floyd for allowing me to pursue this. Um, what we're looking to do is to phase in a collaboration with uh, Griffin Hospital. They developed their own actual school at Griffin Hospital for personal care technicians, phlebotomy, and um, CNA, so by nurse assistant, as well as uh, be able to read and utilize EKGs. So the big thing with this particular program is the funding source, again, is the workplace that connection that I made. Currently, if you're in the public, it's about a $5,000 tuition to the workplace. Has a grant for the next couple of years in order to cover that. They anticipate, but who knows that the grant will be able to continue. What we need to do is to have the students be able to meet their criteria for graduation at Seymour High School by mid-year, first semester, end of the first semester, senior year. And the workplace would be able to pay up to six students then to go to Griffin Hospital the second half of their senior year. And um, some of the documents that I sent you did include the actual schedule of that. And students would be attending class at Griffin Hospital. They would be in Griffin Hospital doing things with clients in Griffin Hospital. Um, and at the end, they would be in order to take assessments for phlebotomy, EKG, CNA, and PCT at the end of the program and hopefully become certified in those areas um, to become employed. Again, this is, um, this is a, a niche place for us. You know, we do we currently have the EMT and some of the things in the EMT is a little bit more difficult than I think some of the things that are here. But we have a set of students who want to be involved in the medical field and yet don't want to go full-time to college yet. So we're looking to focus on um, six student seniors uh, for next year that want to go into this program and want to start working right away to really make sure this is what they want to do. Are they required to work? No, they're not going to be required to work at the end. They may choose, that just goes straight to college after this. But that's what we're looking to focus on. We actually had two students right now who were seniors that are very much interested in it. And through my negotiations with the workplace, they're willing to pay for them upon graduation starting the summer because we weren't able to implement it this year. So there is kids that want to do it. Um, and, and Sony is starting it this year for the first time. Um, and that's, we went to go see the first class there. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Compton and I, along with the uh, Antonio yeah, principal, was there and all the students. So we were able to get an overview. Um, the person who's running is a Seymour grad, a yes. Seymour resident there. So it's it's pretty nice to have that uh, support from them. And um, so we're, we're looking to implement the program. And it, there's, there's no cost to us. It's the kids getting the work done. And the reason why I need to get it in now is because we want to make sure the kids have enough credits by the end of their first semester so that they meet our graduation requirements so they can go off and do this. And that might require the second half of this year, the junior year, if they have study halls, they're going to have to take some electives to make sure they meet that credit need. And that we make sure that we give them kind of preferential choice of classes for the first half of the year to make sure that we put them into that box so they can go do that. The, the, what Ansonia is doing right now is the kids drive themselves. That will be a future topic of discussion for the board to decide if they want to do that or not. Um, the kids would be required to have their COVID vaccines in order to participate hospital setting and that's their program and they will be exposed to everything that anybody in one of these fields is exposed to so it is the medical field there's some really serious things that happen they will be in charge as the teacher said of helping elderly who can't help themselves whether that's in the shower or the bathroom they will see unfortunately deceased People, they will be responsible for a whole bunch of different things as they progress. And they will always have a certified person with them at the time, but there's a lot of exposure to those types of things. But we're trying to prepare them for a career for us. And that's the reality of it. You know, so the, the Ms. Kinnicky, she didn't skip over anything when she was telling these kids and their parents were there too, hey, this is what you're gonna see. So it is graphic, but it's the human body unfortunately this is what happens sometimes to the human body and in order to get somebody better hopefully they're going to have to experience these things now and they'll come out with these three certifications and a salary of what fifty sixty thousand dollars 
you know, and, and these <coughs> salaries are, are kind of on the 25 bucks level. So they're not high, high salary positions, but they're the ability to get yourself into the, the nursing medical. program. Right. Like the LPN or the registered nurse is what right. it leads to, could yeah. lead to. So there are, there's, you know, like I said, I had two that I want to do right now. Um, but unfortunately, they won't have, they don't have credits to do it. But we're going to get them in the summer, the seniors. So I think we will have enough students next year that want to do it. So that is the entirety of that proposal. Um, both in both the manufacturing and this one, we're going to circle back at the end about the given the credits and possibly doing Griffin or the manufacturing. I'm just trying to keep it logically in my head. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, will they be uniquely identified in that environment? In other words, as you remember the old candy stretchers in hospitals mm -hmm. that wore a particular uniform. Will they just be wearing scrubs like everybody else? And yes. They won't yeah, they, any particular. They'll get a Griffin ID yeah. badge. And, and they wear they navy scrubs. They need to go get scrubs. They yes. them five different places they can get them, including Amazon. So, no. And, and when they do go, they will be with the Ansonia students. So they are separating them. They're not going to be with other adults that are in the program. They're going to be Ansonia kids and Seymour kids. and also with individual transportation. Mm -hmm. we, we think we can get that worked out. So the third of um, the larger programs that I'm pretty excited about, um, it's called the First Responders for Pathway. And this actually came from Officer Askowski. Um, we were both at the car show, which was one of the sponsored events at the high school, and came up to me and said, hey, well, what do you think about this? You know, and, and then started ticking, and I said, hey, you know, we could do something with this. Um, Officer Askowski called me on my way here, in the line of duty, actually just did injure himself, not where he's going to be out, I don't think, a long, long time, but he sent his regrets, and he was said, I'll be available, there'll be a phone if you need to call me or whatever, although I don't have great service here, but um, he does send regrets because he planned to be here, so. And this was a recent thing, it wasn't, you know, days ago. Um, so I've been working with him. I also have spoken and worked with um, Assistant Fire Chief Edwards in town. And I was lucky enough on one of the Department of Labor um, conferences I went to this year when they're talking about manufacturing at Tungsten Community College, just happenstance to sit down with one of the deans from Post University. And just through talking with them, they said, hey, do you, you, know, do you know we have a high school program? I said, I was not aware of it. So through that, um, I made the contacts with the person who's actually running that. And I started, through our initial contacts with him, he, he was, Explain the program, and I said, you know, well, what courses do you offer? And he said, well, take the catalog and see what you want to do, and we'll see if we can work with you to make it happen. So at that point, I really started thinking, looking through the catalog, and I saw that they had an incident management program, and they also had criminal justice. And then thinking when I was talking uh, with Officer Oskowski, and then he had mentioned fire might want to be involved in a scene of fire, um, I started trying to put together some kind of program for this. And what essentially ended up happening is Post is willing to uh, allow our students to take close to 36 credits undergrad. The cost to this is to the student. So 
So it's $300 a course or $100 a credit. Um, that's double what it is typically for a UConn course, just so you understand. It does cost $150 for a UConn course for kids currently to take. So it is double that, but it's way in line with a community college if a kid was to pay for community college on themselves. So the, the cost, um, again, is to the students. And what we would be doing is having the kids um, counsel, obviously, in eighth grade, ninth grade, and trying to get them to understand where they want to go, through our different career pathways. And if they are choosing that they want to be a first responder, we really have already one tier and one pathway is open, and that's emergency medical technician, which Mrs. Dyer is teaching. And then we would open up these two other pathways, um, which would be in police and fire. And if they choose the, the police, we would want them, um, preferably in ninth grade, Anybody that wants to take any of these would preferably sign up for an elective that we would teach at Seymour High School. Um, and it's a college career seminar. So this is per post university. Um, you know, if a kid could take it and then choose not to pay the $300, they could still take it, get Seymour credit. If they take it and they get a 75 or better, they would also get the credit there. The second prerequisite course that Kiki Obos wants the kids to take in order to open up the catalog for incident management and criminal justice is a writing course, academic writing course. So we would be integrating that into our current academic writing course. Uh, we, we have that and we would just be opening it up to the younger kids, preferably sophomores that want to go into this area, but it would still be open to any kid that, want to take, that wants to take it and for college credit for that matter. Same thing with the college seminar freshman year could potentially be taken later on by anyone that wants to take it. So those two then are the two prerequisites to take any of the criminal justice or to take any of the emergency management um, courses. And there's five in each of those strands that kids could take at TGO Post. In addition, TGO Post is pretty confident we'll be able to articulate two current, current criminal justice courses that we have. We already have a forensics course and we already have a criminal law course being taught at Seymour High School, so we would just articulate with them for those courses. Again, kids could take it, choose not to pay the 300 and get Seymour credit only, or choose if they get the grades to also get the TPO post credit. So that would fulfill the 36 potential credits that kids could take at Seymour High School in TPO post. And I think I had mentioned one other time to the board, um, Per the person that runs this program, if they take it one course and they decide to go to TGO Post, they get 20% off the position. If they take one of these courses at Seymour High School. And then they have a tiered academic, which I've never seen before, but they do. So a student comes out of any high school and they have a 3.5, they automatically get 60% off. So I said, well, 60 plus the board? And he said, yes. Kid is a 3.5, takes one of these courses, they get 80% off tuition at TGO Post. Uh, for a student that may want to commute, that's a home run, that's like, it's, it's probably equivalent cost from my calculations anyway to going to a community college and having to pay yourself. So with this, the last piece, and perhaps the most important piece, is the um, time when we want to have Seymour PD come into the building to teach courses. So we had to look for a mechanism to do that. And some of that mechanism um, lies in the ability for us now, which is a relatively new state statute, yeah. to grant credit for experience. Um, but also, you know, at the end, you, kids have to do a capstone experience. Right. So we would be able to utilize some more PD to come in to teach in our high school as a capstone experience. So junior year, we propose to have a half year course for capstone, and they have to take a full credit, so it's a half year, and then senior year, half credit for capstone. Seymour PD, according to Officer Ozkowski, he spoke with the new chief, they're willing to send officers on officer time, we don't have to pay for anything, to come teach these courses to our students. I was talking with um, Assistant Fire Chief Edwards, now you gotta realize we have a volunteer department. He was doing his best to try to put together the same type of capstone during the day, but he couldn't get enough people together because people are working during the day. And I completely understand that. And I don't want to lose that opportunity for the kids. So typically we don't, without your authority, go advertising many programs outside, but he's still interested um, as of the end of last week 
and talking with people to see if they could put together their own type of night course for kids that would want to do the capstone experience yeah. with uh, Seymour PD. And I fully, and I know Jim and Dr. Pound fully totally endorse that type of concept. Um, you know, that will result definitively in us getting more volunteers in town and perhaps careers for students that want to do those things. Um, through my talks with, with um, Assistant Fire Chief Edwards, students would never be doing any of the hazardous things. So technically, when they're done with us in high school, they wouldn't be able to take Fire One test because there would be that hazardous piece. He says, but he's confident once they graduate, if they chose to keep pursuing it, it would be a very short time where they get the last piece, the actual hazardous piece in, so they could go take the assessment if they wanted to. Um, so we wouldn't be putting our kids at risk for the hazardous piece. Um, it, it is a fire department, there is fire equipment, there is heavy equipment, so there's always risk in our what you do, but we wouldn't expose them to that level. Um, so though that's what I'm looking to do in these programs, and I think it's pretty remarkable, according to Officer Oskowski, that you know, they're willing to come and, and teach some of these things um, at the high school. And you know, with the ENT program, it's also very nice because, especially in fire, they want you to be ENT certified. So we could potentially have kids doing, you know, one or two of these programs. In most police off police stations, they would prefer that too. But there's much more of a need in police than there is in fire. So a kid could potentially do the ENT simultaneously with fire or police and really set themselves up very nicely upon graduation. If they want to be a police officer, go right into EMT for a couple of years until they're old enough, and then go into PD, or go right into fire and continue to take the coursework as soon as they graduate and do the hazardous piece. So that is the entirety of the proposal. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Is the hazardous um, training offered at post? No. Okay. It's incident management, so. Mm -hmm. Your traditional coursework. Um, the thing, the, the thing with all of their criminal justice, other than the two, the forensics and the, and the um, criminal law that we would teach, and other than the college seminar and the academic writing, all the rest of the criminal justice and all the rest of the um, incident management are done asynchronous. Mm -hmm. So a kid could literally pick up. It is not a rolling admission, so they'd have to do it within the semester. Mm -hmm. But they could pick up the courses whenever they want, and there's a summer semester. And again, it would be $100 of credit, so it would be $300 per course uh, for them. But they could take it up at their leisure. Um, but once they graduate, if they need to do that hazardous training to be eligible for whatever the next step is for fire, is that offered at post? Would they be able to take advantage of those discounts? Not that, I, not that I'm aware of, but Seymour okay. PD, I mean, Seymour Fire okay. says they can plan that. Okay, they can do We have certified, yeah. supposedly, I'm not sure, but two retired fire chiefs that are all certified by the state of Connecticut and one current that's certified by the state of Connecticut to teach a whole bunch of fire courses. So they would be able to fulfill that. Um, not that I'm promising anything either, but both Officer Askowski and Fire Chief Edwards um, were very happy to be there. I brought them to the meeting with Post University, one of, one of my names, I've had several. And you know everybody was contributing um, which is what they wanted for the kids and very excited about the outcome. And then Officer Oskowski and Assistant Fire Chief Edwards started talking about the possibility of trying to create kind of some kind of scholarship funds that kids could access while they're at Seymour High School in order to take some of these courses. Again, nothing's promised, but you know, their level of excitement is so much that they already started thinking that far ahead. Um, so I think it's a win for everybody um, if we were to include this program. So is there any cost to the district? The cost of the district, so there would be a cost of the district for the articulated courses. There was a stipend. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, the last contract they took the stipend out for community colleges. Uh -huh. Kiko was not a community college. Okay. So the stipend would be for any courses uh, taught in criminal law, mm -hmm. forensics, college seminar, and an academic work. Yes, Mr. Over uh, the last 18 years, uh, Mr. Lucky and I have had the pleasure of working together. When we first started working in Seymour High School, we started out with four AP classes. We've 
through largely through his efforts, we've cultivated that number to well over 10. We also realize that the key to Seymour High School's success and largely the attractiveness of the town of Seymour to outsiders is a strong academic okay. program at the high school. For us to be successful, we need to have not have our kids go to private schools. We not to have our kids go to techn technological schools. And largely through his efforts over the past 18 years, we've increased our college offerings, our articulations, our AP offerings. Courses. This should be the next step, actually making the uh, Seymour High School one of the most unique high schools, if not the top unique high school in the state of Connecticut. We would have people, I feel confident, move to Seymour to attend Seymour High School. And also other educators who would want to come and see this because this truly is a comprehensive offerings now because it's addressing the needs of all students on, throughout the, the entire high school student body. And that's crucial because now it's getting to the needs of other students and just really completing it in a more comprehensive way. So currently in our so. EMT program, kids, I of the seven UConn credits. Yeah. I'm taking our allied yeah. health and then the EMT itself and then medical terminology is inside of our EMT. Um, and we also have, not only on top of all the UConn courses, the AP courses, we have articulations at University of Bridgeport. Yes. So our non-AP calculus, our honors calculus kids, our honors pre-calc kids, our entrepreneurship, our accounting kids, they can all qualify to get University of Bridgeport credits. So we've been building that program we, we talked with that professor last month as well at, at that same meeting, and she also offered that any expansions that we wanted to right. do, that she was very uh, hands-on to work with us. Yeah, Goodwin College in yes. UB is now one ownership. It's good. So when we were at the conference, we actually had Nogdick Valley come around to us after I presented what we wanted to do in the manufacturing. Nogdick Valley came, who's how they came, and then Goodwin. Bridgeport came. came. Yeah, Bridgeport. <laughs> University of Bridgeport was Goodwin. So they all came and were like, hey, let's do it with us, do it with us, do it with us. So, um, there are, if, if you see, there's a Nogdick Valley and then there's also, it was a time. So the Perkins grant that I write every year was approximately 22,000-ish, which has funded a lot of things over the last 18 years, let me tell you. Um, I'm so grateful for it. We are in the region. So by that Perkins grant, they have um, uh, career pathways with community colleges. We have to stay within our region. So our region recently has moved from the Nogdick Valley region down to Pacusa Connick, they changed it. And the reason why we could still try to do the um, welding piece is because Pacusa Connick doesn't offer welding. So that's why I was able to go there and take a look at that. So that's why it's kind of split that course, <coughs> but I want the kids to get all the credit. Yeah. Any other questions? put a lot of work into this and, and too as we started out with the initiative and also with Mr. Freud supporting as well with his vision and also the board you know like I said they were very supportive in the early fall when we first started talking about this and this was where we were and look where we are now so thank you it means a lot it's all about the kids absolutely thank you yeah. I think every one of these is great for kids but it also builds a strong community Give back, so I think that's fantastic. So let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the last thing is just the revision of the policy 6146. And in regards with that, this is the same policy in regards that had been revised back in October. And uh, if you will explain, Mr. Lucky, it's just in regards about the situation with the mastery based learning. And this is, this is not, this is not seat time anymore. It's true application of mastery learning. Right. And that's what we're adding. We'll need to add specifically. Um, 
Mr. Frank, do you want to start with what we need to do in Map 7? And I'll get this with the board. Uh, the... Map, map, map 7. Is there a mass screen based learning? You know, yes. A uh, map, how we need to, in the policy itself. Oh, the, yeah. It was the, uh, the grad guide that in October, when we revised the uh, graduation requirements initially, uh, it has, has to do with the change. Yeah. Right. We went to right. the three math. We went to three math to, to uh, from four, four math to, to three. three math. And then also with the STEM, with the added one in math. And yes. we're still encouraging all those students that are capable to do four years in math. But that and, was the change. And, and, and what Ms. Lucky is going to be discussing with you is the state with the repeal language also allows the mastery based learning uh, to fill the capstone requirement as well as an alternative. Right, and not just the seat work, but where it gives you that standard Correct. base mastery. So That's that is not like to add. in the initial sheets that I sent you with mine. Um, that was added to the board proposal, so yeah. you'll see there is a policy, I think it's the last proposal. Yeah, yeah. That okay, policy, if you were to go to the board and click on it, it still shows the old format. Um, so that change would, would hopefully need to be made because it was already approved in the past. But the bigger piece, is to allow us to grant credit for mastery-based learning. Yes. So there was some new legislation, um, and in the legislation, it goes on and says that it's been amended um, that local regional boards of education may grant students credit towards meeting the high school graduation required upon successful demonstration of mastery subject matter content described in the section through educational experiences opportunities, flexible multiple pathways of learning, cross-curricular graduation requirements, career and tech ed, virtual learning, work-based learning, service learning, dual learning, and so on. So this is newer legislation. We weren't able to do this in the past. And part of this is where I wanted to circle back to the last pieces um, that were in here. So we'll go all the way up. Let's see. So as I stated before, we currently have couple of kids, uh, we have one kid right now that's at Platt Tech and, and he's doing um, X amount of hours after school. And that is something I want to grant him Seymour High School credit, so it's on the Seymour transcripts. And then the students that are going to be going to Emmett after school, um, starting in March now, we pushed back the date a little bit, um, I'd want to be able to grant them some credit because they're doing nine hours a week, approximately um, the amount of hours I have. So, you look at the credit that um, I put in here, like a half, half a credit and one is a full credit. I did the math with the hours. So all the way to the top of that document was what we typically teach in hours. And I was able to discern how many hours they were going to do in this program and then make a close to equivalent to say, okay, we're going to give you half a credit because you're only doing 60 something hours, which is close to our half a credit. Yes. And so on. So that's part of the master based learning that I want to give. Here for manufacturing for current kids and all kids in the future. And then the other piece of the mastery based learning is the Griffin Hospital. Um, and this, I think, is going to be very, very, very helpful if you do approve it. All right, with the kids. Um, so the amount of hours that kids are doing each one of these courses is, is basically one credit for each one. So I would want to be able to grant. One credit for certified nurses aide, one for phlebotomy, and one for a PCT, personal care technician, because yes, they're stopping, and, but they're going as certified nurses, and certified nurses aides and phlebotomists are all teaching them at a high academic level. So I want that credit to come back on our transcript so that a student has that forever from Seymour High School. Um, in that, I did a time equivalent, so one of the documents that we had sent to, and I know there was a lot, um, one of them actually had the yeah. calendar on there. It was in color, but so it came with the black and white, so I can hardly see. But they're doing that many hours where they, in my opinion, should get a credit for each of those three different courses um, in there. And so that goes back to this flexible thing we want to do to start getting kids credits for them in different right. career pathways and doing things outside. So that is, you know, that's up to the board's purview in order to amend um, that policy to put in some language that might help us in that way and help the kids, you know, when they find that passion to say, go for it. You know, we're gonna help you graduate high school because you're doing these things. 
So that's my last proposal, yeah. Yeah. is to modify the language in there, not only for the map, uh, but also to give us the flexibility to, to award credit. Wondering procedurally, do we make the recommendation directly from this committee to the policy committee, or do we make it to the board to make the record to the full board? Yeah, I think we'll work with both. I think what would be good tonight, if you can make a recommendation, we'll also take it to the policy committee too. But if we could make a recommendation to the board where he's trying to get this catalog, but it's important that the policy committee see this as well. So, Just Jim, a could you? To adopt it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And or can we send it to the policy committee? Yes. Does the board have to send it? The policy committee. No, no, no. The board should be the last in the, in oh, yes. the uh, chain of events mm -hmm. to accept the policy committee's recommendation of that. We mm -hmm. could just send it to that subcommittee. Okay. Yes, to the policy uh, subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah. We'll ask that they'll just revise and amend. Yeah. Recently, in the last couple of years, yeah. we've always been. Oh, we've always been. As long as I can remember, we paid uh, our students have earned two credits for attending the ECA School of the Arts mm -hmm. in New Haven. Mm -hmm. And when we first started there, we had a straight, straight seven schedule, and they just wouldn't have classes at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. However, when we implemented a, a rotation, our students attending Seymour High School are required to take at least six classes. So now they went from only being able to earn five credits, the ECA students, to require at least six, so I have to take more. Uh, and they'll miss their afternoon classes four days a week. And they'll have to be responsible for work. But that being done, they can still earn their full boat of credits at Seymour High School and then additionally add two extra credits to ECA. So these kids often have well and beyond the graduation requirements credit wise. This is not that, that's, this is really is, in my mind, not that significant. Oh, it's, 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 it's very it's much the same. practice where this has been going on for at least 18 years. Yeah, very much the same. Like you said, that you'll make a recommendation to send it on to the policy committee. So, Jim. Yeah, Jim, could you make it? It's 6146. 6146. Yeah, policy 6146. I'd like to make a motion that we send policy 6146 to the policy committee for review and possible recommendation to the full board for an adoption. Any discussion? No? All in favor? All right. I just want to just say we're just glad to be able to bring these proposals to you tonight. As I said in the overview, this is critical for our students, and I appreciate all the efforts. It's been a lot of time in this, and we're glad that we now can come forward and present it. And again, thank you, Mr. Lucky. I sent out with a, a goal in mind, and you've accomplished that goal, that initiative. Thank you. There's, there's no space on there for policy, uh, excuse me, for curriculum committee members' comments, but I would like to make one at this time, if I may. I would like to commend both Mr. Freund and Mr. Lucky, because of all the years that I've sat on this board, and in particular this committee, the two of them have perennially come in with a wealth of information and particularly Mr. Lucky who makes the presentations normally, mm -hmm. but that's not to take anything from Mr. Mr. Freud. And uh, I'm really comfortable with when they come in to make a presentation because I know we're going to get basically everything we need to know. And they're ready to answer any questions we have. So I think our district's very fortunate to have them at the helm of the high school. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And I, I thought this was wonderful for us to set this up to do this. And you know, they, they've had my total support, and, and they know that. And this is this is a type of 
the way that we need to bring forth with presentations to the committees and to the mm -hmm. board of ed. So thank you. Public comment. Jim Bryan, Principal of Sigma High School. Over the years, there have been many proposals that we have developed, we've made, we felt we strongly needed, we presented to the superintendent, and those proposals never actually got to the Board of Education. And I'd like to just say at this point, we're incredibly happy to have uh, Dr. Compton on board as our superintendent. I, fe I feel as if she has been very supportive of our efforts and recognizes the work that we put into it. And I feel confident when I say that this is really the first year we have been able to address the board directly with most, well, not even most, some of our plans and ideas. There are still more, uh, but they're just not ready to present at this point. So thank you, Dr. Compton. Thank you, Board of Education. Thank you. Very proud of both of you. you.